I'm Kim Vodica, and as you can see, enjoying a bit of nature, getting a little sun out here in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, I was invited by Fine Print to participate in their reading series, their digital or virtual reading series um, for these hour plague times. Um, so I'm the featured author in their most recent issue, which is this one, issue number eight. So I'll start things off by reading my poem that's in here, which is called Womaniacal Manimal Control. We were sent away to Camp Sincerity. That's when we got to thinking. Dump your boyfriend and be our girlfriend. Dump your boyfriend and join our cult. They all wanna fuck you and badly. It's a pass fail on the insertion spectrum. Let us be your boyfriend. We'll pick up the slacker's slack. We'll shower you in roses and French perfume. We'll paint your toenails and massage your feet afterwards. We'll teach you how to love yourself instead of being jealous. We'll teach you how to improve yourself instead of being jealous. We'll teach you how to feel unashamed. In the realm of pure fantasy, you'll know absolute freedom, how to fuck anything that moves and how to feel less guilt now. Our man hating just makes the sex hotter, don't worry. If you swallow your pride, we'll swallow your cum. All we want is to be creatively desired. Tell us you love us, kiss us deeply, eat our pussies, talk dirty to us, laugh. You ask us to tell you what we want, and we do, but you don't. To do so would be to undermine your power. All we offer you is paradise, but you won't accept it. To do so would be to undermine your power. Yet you somehow think you were the best we could do. That's cute. Looks like someone took that you're perfect just the way you are thing a little too far. Yet sometimes we just want to be pillow princesses. Can we be your pillow princesses? We'll queef out your cum and flush it down the toilet with our gel manicures after we harvest your orgasms. We were born with Stockholm syndrome and our birth certificates come with trigger warnings. We are walking, talking trigger warnings. Just look at the guns to our heads. Mansplain our deaths, how we died of PMS. Gather around our coffins and talk about David Foster Wallace. We just can't resist that woke misogynist. Everything we know we learned from mansplaining. We had to fuck a lot of dudes to get this cool. But while you were busy playing with your dingalings, we started an entire revolution. While we were busy playing with your dingalings, we started an entire revolution. But we think you're so sexy when you admit you're wrong. Make us come with your mouth, then we'll talk. Do you hate us or do you just hate yourself? Look us dead in the pussy and tell us exactly what you have to say. Introduce us to our Eskimo sisters in your spank bank. We always send you far more heart eye emojis than you deserve, so you should at least text us back. On our tombstones is written, he texted back. Records are made to be broken. We'll repeat ourselves as many times as it takes. Break our hearts, please. We can't wait. Right. So that's in the new fine print. Got time for maybe one more. So let me get on that. So the new book is The Elvis Machine. We're gonna be backwards here, yes, and we're kind of a little bit in the shade now, but um, it's the new book. 
drops from Clash Books on July 7th. Uh, still up for pre-order, pre-orders mail uh, at the very beginning of May. So I'm gonna do a little ditty called Milk PTSD. I don't play to lose, but I played and I lost. Hard being sexless and knowing someone's heart. Everybody's got something somebody else ain't got. I got the best tight little pussy. I got the best tight little heart and soul too. I also have a moral compass. I got a moral compass and a motel compass and a backseat compass when the going gets too drunk to fuck. I've always been a man's man. Cause the moon is a rogue and the muse is on repeat and my gaze has been thusly affected. Respectable receptacle, man infested, kingly queen with delusions of infamy. What I want I can't have and what I can have I don't want. Alas, Babylonian gunfire. But I will perform and perform and perform. I will do so, oh, so very merely. I'm your flower child in bondage. You can flog me lovingly without loving me, but I'm going to want you to actually love me. And your spirit is oh so sweet. That's why it's all sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows when we meet but the unrequited public would not look kindly upon it. Perhaps we're doomed to wander the planet together forever because neither of us knows how to give or receive unconditional romantic love. But for 24 hours, you were mine. For 24 hours, we lived an entire lifetime. For 24 hours, I was your queen. You were my guy. For 24 hours, you were mine. It's hard work being in love with anything. It's hard work being in love with everything. I've never really healed so much as I've serially distracted myself from pain. I got the best tight little pussy. I may even give you a stigmata during sex. I may even dismember you during sex. I may even dis your member during sex, but you'll never know my heart. I'm your flower lover lower child in bondage bound to you. I'll always be younger than you until I look older than you. Let's put our numbskulls together and find a better outlet. All right, so um, that's about all the time we have here, folks. Um, again, The Elvis Machine up for pre-order, uh, www.clashbooks.com. It's also on Amazon, you and Barnes & Noble, which is also maybe kind of you, but not as you. Um, I have a handful of copies left if you are already connected with me and want me to mail you one personally. Otherwise, it's still available for pre-order, and like I said, those ship in early May, and the book officially drops on July 7th. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Um, thank you to Fine Print for having me, and hope you are weathering these plague times to the best of your ability. Uh, stay safe. Stay at home. Wash your hands. Much love. Midheaven. Our bed is a cloud the night made, our little gray cat its breath. It's a night with one star, fragrant as cold roses. Hairpins sparkle in the cracks of the floorboards. Midheaven. Let it fall out of you. I can hear things in the vents, voices hoarse and sweet. I mean, I whisper. I want to be whispered too. I am the thin place where the light leaks out. A door opens wide as a cat for the cat-faced ghosts to slip through between night and almost day. When I am tired, there is nothing in me, all the pleasures of the senses crushed under my dirty soles. The pleasures of the senses are okay with me. You guessed it. 
I am awake, making a list of everything I have wasted today. It's almost nothing. It's like half a thing. The window is cracked thought wide, smaller than a thought, enough for the moon to get in. Where are we? When are we? Would you unknow me if you could? There are things I wish I didn't know. Peeing in the dark, elbows on knees, cold tile, excited spider in the bathtub. I have a secret fear of still waters. Ritual for continuing to be a woman even though you have never wanted to be anything less than you want to be a woman right now. Balloon moon drifts through the doorway, bobs up to the ceiling. Quarter the moon, quarter it again. You have however many moons I lost track. A fair number, I guess. I don't know, but it seems like a lot. Touch each one with that chic beige lighter. Pop, 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 pop etc. However many pops it takes to feel like you really ruined something. Now you're in the dark. Reach inside yourself and root around. Your liver is an icy opal. Take your opal to the beach on this new planet you have made where it is always night. I forgot to tell you, you have to make a planet. Drag your fingers across wet sand, right across the surface of thought. Bury your opal deep until all your internal light is gone, really, really gone. No, I'm not happy. What do you even mean? Adulthood. I want to be in a cold car with all my selves, coat on, driving, in a Massachusetts I never left or lived. The divine sweetness of the girls in my head, the car exhaling, dirty white over dirty white roads. The mountains press the sky, press the clouds. Far away geese are calling, I park at the party. Cloud of golden midges, I'm in love. Everything is on fire. It is four o'clock on a Friday forever. It is almost spring and I have never been hurt. Sturdy yellow petals over the turnstile, pleasure of excess of heat. In the butterfly garden, I am already concerned everything is past. Nothing ever happens fast enough. I will look these peonies open myself. Walking over the bridge of names, the darkest dark I have ever seen. Dark water, dark cars hushing over the dark street. Watching the party blink on, sealing everything with fear. Warm scent of curled hair on warm, dense fur collar. Dress red as a cat's throat. Cutty Sark. When we go inside the party, who will we be? Loose tobacco, quartz, faded brown rose, incense and silk scarves at the cigarette shop, spiraling piles of books under the windows at Troubadour, names gossiping in the fly leaves, spiders on the porch. Here is the swimming hole where we prize garnets from the rocks, little tick sucking at my chest. Here is where the black bear waited by the door. Here is where we pulled over to talk in the unholy church. Here is the shop where we buy eggs and bread. Here it is. Making faces in the convex mirror, I'm told this is the face that makes me pretty and this is the face that makes me me. Wet leaf on the wet skylight. I am the ghost at the feast. I am afraid of the telephone, thunder, the dead, the space between now and then. The dark is alive with the imagined sense of sleep and hair. I pull it on like a blanket like the night's most awful blanket. I'm breathing dreadful clouds like dreams, wet can of wet ash, burnt cigarette ends, ice on the sill on my elbows. Everyone who lived here before me is dead. Is that a nice thing to tell me before I go to bed? Then merciful sleeping into the charred morning, honey light and the frozen mill stream. Kitten-faced violas in a mug, whole afternoons on the grass, screen door slamming and slamming, fresh red blood on my palm. I am thinking of something. Tell me what I am thinking. I shouldn't, but I am. I don't remember anything. Rainy afternoon on locust, following smells home, detergent, jasmine, dough, shit, the cold expensive smell of the coats on the bed. Is it wrong to care about this? No. Ammonita, hen of the woods, little red one with white dots. Every slender thing that grows on the forest floor has a name. Brackish water has a taste like fear. Fear tastes like aspirin inside the old cupboard in the shed, overturned boat stored in the eaves, doves, dove shit. It is not okay to be here. Ferns grow out of bricks. The apples are going with sweet dead faces. 
wet, dusty scent of storm windows, ozone, non-shadow of blinds making vertebrae, watery light on the wall, the sound of mail being sent, slide whistle of joy, the dumb daily things, the luxury of abstinence from lipstick. Oh world, oh world, when did you get so small? Yes, all these sounds, low and holy in my ear like night. Ritual for becoming unborn. Become a secret that turns itself inside out. Become the remotest part of yourself. Become a snake that becomes a dark boat, slicing through black brackish water, rich mud, crackling dying things, quiet dead things. The moon cuts the water, and that's where you fit your body, into the groove of cold light. The water closes around you. The water reflects nothing. Think of all the things you can find under the mud. The spinning wheel and the candle, the CD player and the candle, the teenager in the candle where the candle is red, a crushed velvet something, a moon on a chain. A crescent moon is the universal symbol for night. A snake is a chain of memories. Get this poem tattooed on your lower back. How does it feel to be a spell? How does it feel to be a spell? Unborn, reddish. It's about half a thought or like the edge of a dream. I don't know, what am I supposed to feel? In my last three lives, I was a kitten, little sad-faced cat slipping between worlds. I ate a black bee, yellow bee, a red bat, an orange bat. I'm assuming that this is how I died. Little bat-faced kitten nuzzling a ghost. When there is nowhere else to go. My heart is a hotel room, and I am alone here tonight. Cold windows, cold sheets, warm breath, Cold city sparkling coldly below, time drying on my thighs. If you ask me, I will tell you. Even as a child, I knew childhood was a mistake. It's been a long day. Now I am 37. The mornings go on until four o'clock. That is when I am closest to death. Today I am eating tulip leaves dying of water because there is the unreal and then there is the really, really unreal. When you are my age, you will understand. My hair grows long and I cut it. My hair grows long again and I cut it again. Change is seduction. Change is seduction. Seduction is a message. You could never be this again, even if you wanted it. Now I am 37. Who even am I? Hungover, not even real. I froze my eyes with the lip of a Coke can. Well water and jasmine, milk, milk, lemonade. The perfume of the suburbs haunts my hangover, and every ex-boyfriend finds me on the internet. I was drunk enough to look in the mirror and think, this is okay. Now I am stoned, eating cake in bed. Sorrow is a long game. When there is nowhere else to go, past all desire, past the place of feelings, my hands are sexy lions hunting in the yellow forests of memory. I don't want to remember things. Paper like moth wings, those folded notes, soft foxed edges, handful of pony beads, high school, high school, high school. Why won't you help me not feel like this? All the dying commas fall blazing from the sky. The moon has a drunken face, laughing and laughing over the gravel drive in the blood bright October air. The truth is not that bad coming from you, but when the truth is coming for you, that is another story. Who can loosen a champagne used lay with her teeth? Uh-oh, I can. Are we ever not within a breath of hell? Jim beams like three or four of them and I am past reason. I am licking the tender inside of my own tender elbow. I am the rickety queen of my own bed. The last time I was beautiful, I carried the cold in on my coat, carried a book wrapped in brown paper, a surprise, my hair a crown of braids, candlelight, fat glasses of golden wine. Be careful what you wish for in the airport bar. Now I am burning and burning in circles. My crown is fire, no rain, no fire. My crown is the heat of things passing. Hi, I'm Gion. Um, I am a poet and I'm gonna be reading some things today. Thank you so much to Fine Print Paper for having me. I'm really excited to be part of this and that it's happening. Um, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna jump right in. You might have to write it nicer than real life. 
I find myself strolling past my own ghost, and I keep my eyes down and walk through her as though she isn't the most important person in the world. Who is trying to be the most important person in the world? A stranger beside me cruising up Colfax, sniffling about Rick Ocasek's death, and talking about my sadness as if it's a big animal that should stay outside. Someone who says the worst pain he's ever been in was waking up with a sore neck two days ago, and saying I love you is like stuffing endless chocolate chip pancakes into a screaming mouth, along with freeways and cities and people, and front yards full of dahlias and cherry tomatoes and rented roller skates and jacket pocket candies and plastic golden buttons, and I feel my mind leave my body and come back again in a bed uptown. I have stopped being angry, and now I am tired. It might be more poetic to say an octopus dreams about an ocean with no plastic in it, but the reality is she's dreaming about catching crabs with her magic camouflage. You can't dream about what you don't know. You can't invent a face you've never seen. Everything comes in threes, including days. A home improvement magazine hits the deck. A labradoodle eats fries out of its owner's mouth. Nick Cage's stupid shirt in Raising Arizona. There's a fire on the mountain, and in the dark, in the car, I can see trees crowning brighter than stars, and love is standing behind someone forever, and the moon is another place I'll never go. Better than tornadoes in the dark. There's a raccoon on its side sleeping. Actually, it's dead. And snow on the trash cans in a street that used to mean something. Past rashes, late night boy band, the moon and the medevac chopper. It's no problem to believe I'm the only one who's felt a feeling. Selena Gomez and AutoZone, cough syrup and pizza. I map the ways I've been mistreated, thrown outside to cry, childhood dental surgeries, too young for sync and too old for One Direction. But does it help? Airplane boneyard in Roswell, lip gloss, taco truck, wildflower rain in my bed last summer a cover of Thunder Road in an old haunt where we talk about seeing each other inside a neurotic understanding. I never have to ask what happened here, only what now. And now I'm gonna read some out of my chapbook, Love and Fear and Glamour. Um, you can find it on my Instagram. And it is a long poem, so it doesn't really have other titles other than Love and Fear and Glamour. So here we go. The heavy rain, you fishing handfuls of wet food out of the pea trap, one-way plane tickets and Mitski when I'm feeling cinematic. Your big secret surprises me because it doesn't seem like a secret, but you know, darkness is relative in the rain. Lately eating makes me sicker than starving. My hunger turns you on, so I'll be hungry forever. When our moods don't match, you'll take that wrong. White shirts on hangers in a back seat and people hugging under their umbrellas, pink and white. Me yelling fuck you at every car that clips puddles in the gutter and sprays water over my legs on the sidewalk. Friends jokes about the folk punk musician in my DMs. These perfect empty days. Take another picture in the same bathroom, ride the same bus, wear the same coat, drive the same car, in the same sun. If I can make it to the next gas station, Orange cones poking out of potholes everywhere. One beer on an empty stomach. I think about arson, which is like the poetry of felonies. You do it for no one but yourself, the total destruction of the self. I think this is like that too, dousing my living room heart in gasoline as soon as I feel something I can't control. It'll rain tomorrow and the next day, but not the day after. Jung said torment belongs to the desert, and he was right about that. Kissing and kissing after siphoning gas in a Santa Fe driveway a long time ago, like licking hot death on the mouth, the way it lingered on my skin for days, leaking out my pores, every whiff of it leaving me hungry. You said we're in this boat together and the boat is on fire, but maybe it's a house that burned years ago and we're carefully gutting it. I don't believe in being barefoot on airplanes. The clouds over Charlotte, cartoonishly identical, in the dream, you sit me down and pull sheaves of paper out of a bag and throw them in my face, and I know they're mine, and you hate them, and you're gone. Like me, my subconscious has never been secretive or subtle. Work It by Missy Elliott clanging during turbulence into New Orleans. 
I eat half a burger and have to stop even though I haven't eaten anything else all day. I think I'm only now learning what it means to be sick in the head. I keep catching glimpses of a person in a little hat who talks to her therapist on the phone and stays in hotels and dates older men and eats gin and tonic, a whole shared folder of pictures of me fracturing into a woman with wide shoulders and boyish hips, a woman with a $300 haircut and a pink mouth, a woman looking teenage and TV in Nikes and short shorts. On magazine, there's a woman burning sheets of paper with the end of a cigarette crouched on the sidewalk saying, I don't have feeling in my fingers, so I can do this. Is it fucked up that I hate mommy poetry, but I love daddy poetry? Mommy poetry is about what's going to live forever. Daddy poetry is about how you're going to die and your children will watch you do it. I am a child who will live forever. I'm sitting in your jacket with your hand on my knee. Do you feel as bad about daddy poems as I do about mommy poems? I don't think so. It's not the same. He was too nice to live is what you and Adam say about your dead friend. He was too nice to live is what we would have said of my uncle with AIDS if he had died 20 years ago. He was too nice to live is what abstract expressionist painter Dusty Bonger said about her cowboy from Nebraska. If he wasn't belligerent, he'd be too sweet is what we laugh about over tablecloths. You take your hand out of your pocket and touch your whiskey instead of me. If we are to be together forever, how can I keep writing about you? I think it'll be nice until we die. Zach says they'd hand feed me just like their dog. I know they'd do it any time. Your voice at the party sooner than I'd expected to hear it, but there you are. You say, oh, now I get it when I unbutton my shorts. You're looking at me the way I look at you, a desire that startles me and makes me feel glamorous and perfect in the ridiculous hotel room with the muffled EDM playing outside by the pool. I ask what you're thinking and you say the way I look, how happy you make me. I think I make you sad, mostly. We cruise around the bywater and a crowd of kids on BMX bikes cat calls me like grown ass men, like they don't have moms at home. We agree it's a favorite neighborhood if we're picking and choosing across America while trying to remember the lyrics to I Miss You by Blink-182 and singing them into the street. The palm trees of love, the pitted streets and dark bars of love, the cheap gasoline of love, the exchange rate of love. It should feel like going to another place and realizing your money is worth more than it is at home. Your immediate and glorious sadness across from me at dinner, your shaking right hand, and I can see what you looked like as a little boy trying not to cry. We're talking about children and who has them and my cousin who had a son just to undo all of what his bad father did to him. You ask what I'm thinking, and I say it's unfair that we had to have terrifying childhoods, but really I'm thinking that it scares me how deep the feeling runs. Falling in love is like death, like grief, the body too little for feelings, forgetfulness, lost appetite, wishful thinking, and suffocation. All dreams are the same, sunflowers with little Walmart button smiles at their centers, holding my dead grandfather's hand, the half-awake ghost of you in bed beside me. Women stop me in the street, the brunch spot, the bar, to tell me I'm beautiful. I'm beautiful for myself, and all the women tell me, when you don't fight for who you want to be, the world does it for you. Elvis's genuine fingernail, water in a vial from the pool in Graceland, the big blue plate of peace and love, my crotch like piano keys. In the dream, I know the horse by the teeth and the dark runny sea of its eyeball, not the whole animal. Dusty Boger's grandson came home from school and found his grandmother painting the void, which might be another way to say she was living. This void looks pregnant to me, an egg yolk staring into the gag reflex of my soul. Dusty Boger's beautiful cowboy husband died at 35, and after his death, she became a better, more famous painter than him. Jasmine wind up every street like a slap in the face, jasmine wind blowing into the dive bar melting me apart. I think I have no predators. I could be wrong. How many orders of chips and nacho cheese is too many orders of chips and nacho cheese? I'm made of hangover when I kiss you goodbye over and over. We promise to be completely different people the next time we're together. I lie on my back in the hotel pool in the dark and pick stars out of the milky sky, blondies one way or another pinging through the water, and I feel it in my belly. 
I can't come because the fucking Grim Reaper is in bed with me, leaning on my business. All dreams are the same. I let myself be happy about you for a few minutes. I tell a stranger you're my boyfriend. I have sweet daydreams instead of ones about my life after you. I wonder if you do this too before the darkness slinks back in. Do you dream of every day being like me kissing you in the road of the bywater in a yellow dress in the sun? Of never dealing with people while they're dying. To never be afraid for children's fingers around hinges and bike spokes. A man tells me there's a special place in heaven for people with exact change. It's nobody's fault, the poverty of it all. Hi, my name is Emily I'm Goldsmith, and I am here in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, thanks so much to Fine Print and to Dylan and Chris for organizing this and for having me in this virtual reading series. I'm going to read a couple poems for you guys, well, more than a couple. And the first one is called A Summation. Enter the geographic lexicon. Branch, tree, stump, memory fragment. My neighbor studied cartography before computers and soon went out of a job. My veins are little connecting roads on the map of my full body. I know the pieces, like tartan, like Evangeline's oak, like the crackling, split wood, and crushed light. I was sent a news clipping. Woman sleeps for 10 days. She awakens only once during that time, and then only to eat lunch. When I was 13, I was told to declare my obedience to a congregate, prepped by a spritz of off-brand perfume and an ill-fitting dress. I wore my hair long and entangled like curtains. I pledged my virginity to an invisible man, my family, and a room packed with strangers. I got a ring, but the boys got things like Xboxes and gift cards, a memento. Struggling with thinking thoughts there, aren't you? Have you heard of covenant eyes? The veins in my body Tell le ponte populaire, la ponte résistance. This next poem is called Valhalla. My mother remembers teaching herself how to draw stars on a foggy window when she was five. Most of us look to the sky for a release. My neighbor at dinner proposes that we are but molecules, that perhaps our universe exists as one fabric weaved into a shirt and are beyond just wool. Many places are full with deity-obsessed persons, regardless of their unique terrains. They want to praise something. Should earth become empty, dust is just dust. What would you do if you were left alone in a museum. Would you take a nap? This next poem is called Novaculite Washed Up on Shores. Mississippian age tools surrounded our walls. We've kept an old whetstone in a lockbox for a time such as this. Dense, resistant, encoding sea floors where organisms such as diatoms are abundant in the water. The devil is a river, and we grew up with him. He was the shadow in our backyard, in our bayous. I'm not well suited for road base or riprap. I learned heat resistance like my area grand mare. She was a robo, a bro, a vicnaire, and a bourgeois. 900 feet thick in southern Wichita, the church is transformed and recrystallized, just like flint, just like mining slicing tools. It took a whole lot to oil my body up and dredge my limbs across the coarse edges until my bones were pointed enough 
to cut myself loose. No one called me after that. I am lucky in that way, I guess, to leave no ligaments attached. The next poem I'm going to read is actually from issue eight of Fine Print. And it is called Arkansas Roaming Wide. When back in the day, you bought one knife and kept, boil the stone and scrape it. You can dredge the bottom and rip it all up. Hard and dense and white, silica artifact resound. Query from outcrops, unique in body. Forget the dead, the leaves. The day when forest standing no longer resist. The past repeats despair. Our translucent razor stone exists to remind us what we lost. Terra demands blood, demands break. Worship Earth, not God. Terra waves its arms fervently again. Rip yourself open. So, um, you can find this from Fine Print on their website. They'll just charge you the $3 to ship it to you. Um, the magazine itself is free. And when we get back to society, you can find these um, all over, especially in Texas and Louisiana. Um, but also, I'll put out a bunch in Lexington. This next poem is called Fuck Bodies. My body wants to fuck you, but my body gets a UTI instead. I talked to my mom about LGBT rights on the phone the other day, and she abruptly changed the subject to the impeachment trials. I only wake off to girls and my one beautiful husband. I feel like the British should be able to talk about sex because they have more invigorating words for it. Sadly, they are almost as repressed as the rest of us. Is it the French who can fuck and talk about it? Birds and bees, right? I never got that analogy. Instead, I got an abstinence-only sex education and a picture book. I self-educated, but much like with big words in my much too old for me books, I couldn't pronounce the vocabulary. The first penis in my mouth was shoved there to cork my objections and was remembered by cuts on my scalp that took weeks to heal. I have yet to need an abortion, but I would get one if I had to. Poetry is more about fucking than it is about money. I've been thinking about writing erotica since poetry is not about money. My body had its signals mixed up for a long time. My body did not want to fuck anything or touch. Now when I fuck or touch, I feel powerful. If I said this to my mom, she would want to wash out my mouth with soap. I am saying this to my mom by putting it in a poem, and I am not even getting paid for it. And the last poem I have for you is called An Evocation. The crisscross of the fence wiring catches my finger as I trace down it. I force myself to go outside occasionally. My husband thinks going outside is the miracle cure for my daily headaches, the ones I've had ever since we began self-isolating. The dog bounces boundless after a bee. The tree shakes quietly in the soft wind. I watch the winged ant crawling slowly across brick red. I wonder where she is going today and how soon she will die. The hours pass so quickly in the lava lamp of time in quarantine. I weigh a single leaf in my palm. I scurry in. I wash my hands. I shout for the dog. I shout again for the dog. I look toward the computer, toward the stack of books and student papers. I grab my knitting needles instead and stitch. I think about the churches in Louisiana refusing to abide by stay-at-home orders. This makes me want to set Bibles on fire. I light a candle for my great-grandmother instead. I summon the earth into my chest. 
My dad is still sending scripture to our family group text. I am still ignoring them. The sky is white today. The skeleton trees are just starting to bowl. I feel an unexplainable desire to run naked as fast as I can through the street, barefoot. I take a nap in silk pajamas instead. Thank you.